my Jesus I shall see when I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace then he'll take me by the hand lead me through the promised land what a day what a day that will be when my Jesus I should see when I look Lord, we just thank you tonight. We praise you. We give you all the glory, all the praise for your presence, Lord. We thank you for everything you're doing tonight in our midst. And we ask God that you will draw near to us in a greater way in our lives. Tonight, I want to share a few minutes with you from the life of Jesus, one of his great miracles that we see in the Gospel of John, chapter 5. It's one of the one of the great miracles of healing that we see in the Bible. And it's one that really has a message tonight that goes beyond just simply a healing, although that would be enough. But this is a healing miracle that has a message for each of our lives. Hey, Will, long time. How you been? Good to see you. It's a, it's a Jesus Connect reunion tonight. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. We got, we got uh, Diligent, Caleb in the house. We got Lashia and we got Will. Good to see you guys. I am doing well, as good as can be expected after losing my, my best friend, my dog. And I know some people probably took a hearing it, but that dog was special to me. She was uh, a part of my ministry. She, she used to, uh, Caleb can uh, testify, she would come in at the end of the service and go, hey, wrap it up. You're, I'm a long-winded preacher anyway, but the dog would have to tell me to wrap it up so I could go for a walk with her. She'd want to go for her walk. And did that for a number of years. What I want to talk about tonight is take up your bed and walk. Jesus goes to a pool called Bethesda. And laying around the pool were disabled people. People that couldn't walk. People that couldn't see. People that couldn't hear. People with diseases. I want to turn to John 5. And after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went to Jerusalem. Now there in Jer Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate was a pool, which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, the paralyzed, 
waiting for the moving of the water, for an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made whole of whatever disease they had. So tonight, we picture Jesus. And we see that as he went to this pool of humanity, this is a picture to me of, of the human condition, right? In the human condition, in the human uh, planet that we live on, there are many that have plagues in their, in their soul, in their life. There are people that are diseased, yes. There are people sick, yes. There are people that are born blind, yes. People that can't hear. But more than that, there are souls that are troubled everywhere we look. There are people with disease in their soul. They're, they're, maybe they're strung out on heroin. Maybe they're bound by cocaine. Or, or maybe they have an alcohol uh, problem. Or maybe they're just struggling with the loss of something in their life. Maybe they're grieving tonight. But this, is a, this pool is a picture of humanity tonight. And we see Jesus moving towards the, the human condition, the human plight, as it were, with compassion, with love, and with healing. And he comes into this area, and as he begins to move about the people, he zeroes in on one person. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity, a sickness. It actually, he was unable to walk for 38 years, 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? So think about it tonight. This man, 38 years, not able to walk, not able to get up. And of all the people there, Jesus zeroes in on him. And he asked him a question that Kind of in a way, it's like, why? It was kind of like a rhetorical question. Do you want to be healed? And I'm sure the man was thinking to himself, well, yeah, I would love to be healed, Jesus. But here's the problem. And see, this is this is what we do, right? This is what we do. We always want to help Jesus out by telling him why we can't be healed or why God can't do something. And, and it's our doubt talking. It's our fear talking. Sure, I would love to be healed. I've been in this condition a long time. And I submit to you tonight, there are many people like this man that have been in the condition they're in for a lot of years. I knew a, a, this lady in our neighborhood growing up. She, she never opened her curtains. Her house was always dark. And like during Halloween, she would never like give away any treats. She was that person in the neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, I think she got her house egged a few times. But at any rate, it was one of those situations where she just seemed like, uh, like she didn't want to be bothered by anything or anyone. And she stayed in her house. And nobody knew why. Nobody knew why. She was completely shut off. And then one day later on, when I got older, I realized that her husband had died. So she had become a recluse. She couldn't deal with the loss of her husband. She didn't know how to handle it or whatever the case may be. So she shut everything off. It just went into a, a, a place where she just left the world behind and said, I'm just going to stay in this house. And it was sad. It was sad. And people can get become so bedridden with their problems. 
They can become so ingrained with certain feelings and emotions. And, and you don't have to be an older person to feel that way. You can be a younger person and feel sometimes overwhelmed. You can feel depression. You can feel sorrow and sad. You live in a world where if you watch the news for an hour, you're, you're like ready to, you know, say, God, what's happening here? This world is insane. People are insane. I just read, and, and you know, it's not just the United States. I just read somebody in Berlin, Germany, took a car and just ran through a parade of people and killed like 20 people, just mowed them down for no reason. Everything in our world is tipped upside down. It's crazy. There's so much anger. There's so much bitterness as people are going through this world. And so we wonder sometimes with the world that's going mad, what people are, are angry, people are demonic and diabolical. And they have this problem. This man was for 38 years bedridden, as it were. And the, the bed that Jesus is referring to here was a mat that he had rolled out and he was laying in that mat. That mat represented everything in his life. Every possession that he had was right there with him. And all he could do was lay there every day by this pool called Bethesda. Now, the interesting thing is this angel that used to come and stir the water. So whenever the water would start to bubble... Whoever could get into the water first would get healed. The waters had some sort of healing power through the Lord. So Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred, but while I am trying to get in, another steps before me. In other words, I try, but I can't get to the water. I can't get to the healing. You know how many people are like that in this world right now? They would give anything to be healed. They would give anything to be to feel whole again. And I'm not just talking about of sickness or 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 some kind of um debilitating disease or or you can't walk or whatever i'm talking about the spirit of man i'm talking about people's lives people are in bondage today like we said to so many different things and they would give anything there's people that are in i know for a fact people in my own family that have been in rehab to try to overcome drugs i had a, a nephew i've talked about that had a heroin addiction so bad and like five of his friends died of a fentanyl overdose he was fortunate to not go through that, and he got he got made whole, and and sort of, and he's still working on things. But let me tell you, there are people that would give anything to be made whole. This man, when he heard Jesus ask him, "Do you want to be made whole?" You know what's that went through his mind? I've been sitting here for thirty eight years. Nobody can touch me. Nobody can heal me. This is an impossible thing, sir. So yeah. Yeah, I want to be healed, but it's kind of like a pipe dream. That's what he was probably thinking. And Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and walked. He took up his bed and started walking. He took up his bed. See, that's the key. If he would have went back in that bed and laid there, of course, why would he? He was healed. I'm sure that the, the last thing in the world that man wanted to do was get back in that bed that reminded him of 38 years of bondage. Right? Amen. So he gets up and begins to walk. This is the key to this story had he stayed in that bed he never would have walked a day in his life 
if he stayed in that bed, he never would have been able to understand the power of, of the healing that the Lord had given him. Do you want to be healed? The man was hopelessly helpless. He couldn't make it himself into the waters where the angel was stirring it up and the healing waters were flowing. He couldn't make it there. But see, somebody greater than the than those healing waters was standing right in front of him. The one who made the healing waters. Amen. The one who could do it was standing right in front of him. The one that had the answer, the one that had the power to heal him, the one that had the power to deliver him was right there. And he said, do you want to be healed? And the man said, yes, of course. So Jesus heals the man and he begins to walk. Immediately, the Bible says he was healed. But he took his bed up. And that's the key. See, a lot of Christians, they come to the part where they are healed, maybe. Maybe God heals them. So somebody gets the greatest healing of all is what? Getting saved. Coming out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ, coming into the knowledge of the Savior. That's the greatest miracle of all. I asked somebody the other day, I said, what's the greatest miracle that Jesus does? And that is to open somebody's blinded eyes and save them from their sins. That's the greatest miracle of all the miracles that Jesus does. That's the greatest. Greater than any physical healing that he could do. Because you can go to hell. I mean, you could go to heaven with a, with a bad leg you could go to heaven with with a sickness but but you can't go to heaven if your soul has not been saved you can't go to heaven if you haven't been redeemed by the blood of jesus see that's the miracle that's the greatest miracle of all is that is to be saved and so when i look at this man that was healed of his disease of, of his infirmity 38 years he was not able to move i look at this and i picture salvation i picture somebody that gets saved and they take up the bed and they begin to walk they begin to walk where they begin to walk with jesus they begin to walk in the direction of the lord they begin to walk in the spirit, they begin to walk in Jesus Christ. And that is the key. Is that they begin to walk in a way in which God is now in, in this man's life. Jesus Christ is now in this man's life. And as he begins to walk, I'm sure he's not just kind of, you know, Mm -hmm, casually walking he's leaping up and down and praising god wouldn't you if you were not able to walk for 38 years and all of a sudden you're walking you're moving your limbs you're going forwards amen that's the key is you got to walk because so many christians get saved they come to an altar or they get saved at church or they get saved at home or wherever they get saved and they never move their muscles a day for Christ. They never go forwards. They just sit in that bed that they were in for all them years. Now listen. So many people are like this. In the church. They never ever understand the importance of taking up their own bed of affliction. And saying I'm no longer staying in that bed. I'm no longer sleeping in that bed. That bed represents torment. That bed represents bondage that bed represents all that the devil tried to do to destroy my life i am not laying in that bed another day i'm getting up i'm walking there's a story in the old testament i tell it quite often it's one of my favorites but there were four lepers lepers were as you know were people that got a disease that basically ate their flesh it was a very disgusting disease they would have oozing sores and 
they would lose their arms and their limbs and it was a terrible disease and the bible even says it was a type of sin leprosy was a type of sin in the bible that's how disgusting sin is to god it's like leprosy but these lepers were in a situation where there was a famine they didn't have any food or water and they were in this village and they heard that the assyrians were uh going to battle against the Israelites. And so they said within themselves, if we stay here, we're going to die. But perchance we get up and we begin to move our bodies. And I can see these four lepers barely able to walk. And I can see them grabbing each other, all four of them. I can see them holding each other up and they're walking. They're moving. They're going forwards. And they said to themselves, maybe we'll make it to the Assyrian camp. And maybe if we say we surrender, they'll help us. They'll give us some food. They'll give us some water to help us keep us alive. I can see them moving, trying to get to to, to the Assyrian camp. And the Bible says they made it to the camp. Against all odds, they made it. And as they made it to the camp, when they got there, there was nobody there. See, what had happened was God sent a wind through the camp of the Assyrians. And they thought it was the Israelites advancing on them. And they ran. They fled. For their lives. And they left behind all the gold. The silver. Food. Water. So when the four lepers got there. To their surprise. They saw all of this food. All of this water. Riches. Because they didn't. Stay. In bed. They didn't stay in their misery. They didn't stay in their condition. They got up and they did something. You see, that's the key to the story tonight. And they were blessed. They were blessed because they did something. They moved them themselves forwards. I know a lot of Christians today that are staying in bed spiritually, figuratively, and they're not moving in Jesus Christ. They're not making any progress. I know some people, they've been saved longer than I have, and they've never, ever grown a day in their life. And that, my friend, is sad. Moving, walking, and Paul says in Galatians to in 5, walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. Walk. Too many people stop short. They're content with, oh, I'm saved. You ask them, are you saved? Yeah, I'm going to heaven. Are you doing anything for the Lord? What do you mean? Are you witnessing? Are you reading your Bible? Do you pray? Do you have a relationship? Oh, oh, you know, I try. And I'm not trying to put anybody down, but listen. Jesus said to the man, take up your bed and walk, meaning don't stay behind. Don't live in the past. Don't live in the past. I have done that. I've lived in the past. I've lived in the past of my failures. And I thought, you know, I could never, ever rise up again. And Satan had lied to me. He had deceived me. He had tricked me for so many years. So many years. And one day I was praying and and I was seeing God begin to move in my life again. And he gave me this. It was, it was a dream. And in my dream, I saw all these people laying on their, on the ground and they were like asleep laying all around. And it was a quite an amazing dream to be honest with you, because there was a guy dressed like a shepherd. He had on like sackcloth though. It was a weird, it wasn't a white garment. It was like a sackcloth colored garment, like brown sackcloth. He had this giant stick and he was banging the sides of the wall of this room. 
and he was yelling at the top of his lungs, wake up, wake up, wake up, banging the side of, of, the, of the room. And all of a sudden, I, I was awake. But I looked around me and all these people that were sleeping started waking up. And that's when the Lord began to speak to me that he wanted to work in my life and, and redeem the time that I'd wasted. And I started coming back to the Lord. And it was these dreams that he was giving me. Like I had three or four of them that were very similar to that. I didn't realize how I had fallen into that trap. And we can, we, can, we can be a Christian. We can be serving God and be depressed and not even really know how depressed we are. And we're lying in a bed of depression. And we're letting that keep us back from serving God. And so I had to deal with the depression, the discouragement. I had to deal with guilt and shame and everything else that I had allowed to come on my life. And, and, and Jesus was saying, take up your bed and walk. I've got a plan for your life. I want to use you. I want to do something in your life. It's not over with. You see, the devil tried to lie to me. It was over. I was done. I got so depressed. I was living in discouragement. And God showed me the scripture. Take up your bed and start walking. Move forwards. There is a man and a story that I heard years ago. His name was Norman. And there was an evangelist named Mike Evans. And he, <laughs> he moved into this neighborhood and he had this neighbor across the street that was a recluse. He wouldn't come out of his house hardly ever. His house was so dirty, he said, and, and his yard was, was horrible. He was a hoarder. He collected junk. And... He says to God, he says, God, why, why did you have to put me across the street from this? As he said in his, in his words, kind of a weird guy. Why, why am I, a, you know, I have a daughter's and this guy is, who knows? He might be crazy. And he began to see this man every now and then come out of his house. He said it'd be, you know, 80 degrees and he would have on galoshes and a, and a you know, a, a winter coat. And so one day he seen him struggling to, to get his lawnmower going. And so Mike went over there and, and uh, he said that the spirit of the Lord spoke to him and said, go over there and help him fix his lawnmower. So he goes over there, you know, <laughs> reluctantly starts to get in a conversation with him. He goes, the guy just grunted at me. He goes, Arr! and so <laughs> he ends up. He ends up going up to him, you know, he's like, ah, hey, I'm here to help you. Can I help you? And the guy's like, Rrr. so he takes his, he takes the, you know, Mike takes the spark plug. He cleans it up, puts it in, it fires up. And the guy's like, Rrr. so he leaves, you know, and that was the beginning of the relationship with this guy named Norman. So as the time went on and the story goes on, God began to speak to Mike to get involved in this man's life. And it was always the funniest thing because it was always things that like one time he had to, he had to uh, change a, a, a flow valve on a toilet and he's laying under it. <laughs> and he said there was so much junk on the toilet. And he said, as he was trying to get the nut off, it was like junk was coming down in his face and stuff. And he said that, um, as he was working on it, he goes, God, this isn't the PTL club. This isn't TBN. Like, you know, because he wanted to be like a big time preacher on TV. And here he is sitting under a toilet trying to fix a nut for some guy. And he's like, uh, the Lord said, when you've done it under the least of these, you've done it unto me. He's like, all right, God, I'll, I'll, I'll keep doing what you want me to do. So long story short, he keeps ministering to this guy. He's, so he took him to uh, Opera Land. And they had these rides there, and he was on a uh, one of those uh, go kart rides where they uh, what do you call it? Bumper cars, yeah, bumper cars. So he's in the bumper cars thing with this guy, and he's in a car, 
And it, it, for some reason, he said that Norman's car wouldn't go anywhere. It was just sitting there. <laughs> so he was like a dead duck in the middle. And he said, all at once, everybody that was on the ride just took all of their anger out and vengeance out on Norman's car. And they just banged into him. And he said, while that happened, he said, the spirit of God spoke to him and said, that's what they've been doing to Norman his whole life. They've been beating him up. They've been teasing him. They've been tearing him apart until he just became this recluse who didn't want anybody to bother him and so on and so forth. And so he lived in this dirty old house by himself for years. He had a sister that died when he was little. His parents died and he was he only had one sibling and then she died and he just freaking gave up and said that's it i don't want to deal with anybody i don't want to deal with anything and it was horrible and he had lived in a bed of sorrow isolation for like 40 years until mike evans came into his life and then all of a sudden he started coming over there for sunday dinners and uh (laughs) <laughs> the last thing that was so hilarious was he hadn't showered in like, I don't know how many years he went in there and his bathtub was full of like magazines. He hadn't he taken a bath or shower. He goes, okay, we're going to clean this up and you're going to get in there and you're going to take a shower. And so he got the, the bathroom cleaned up, made him, made him take a shower. He said it was like trying to get a baby in a shower. He wouldn't want to go in there. You know, and he had to fight him to get in. And finally, he got him all cleaned up and everything, invited him over for Sunday dinner. And little by little, he started to receive the message of Jesus Christ. And it got to be several years into the story, and Norman was starting to become more normal. He was starting to go places. He cleaned up and... um. Mike uh, was cleaning his windows. They were all dirty. And he's like, the Lord said, it's time. He goes, all right. He goes, Norman, do you know what it is to be saved? He goes, well, I haven't really thought about it. He goes, well, he goes, Jesus comes into your heart and he cleans up everything on the inside. He makes you a new person. He goes, that's what it is. And he goes, oh, kind of like when you're cleaning the windows and they get all shiny and I can see through them better. He goes, yeah. He goes, okay, I understand that. And that day he accepted Jesus and he got saved. It was an amazing story because it was the story of what every Christian and every person should be doing every day and that's just loving people as jesus would love them and giving them the gospel but not only that but to understand that this was a man that was in a bed of absolute isolation and and he was not ever ever going to change he would have lived a hermit and died a hermit if it wasn't for the spirit of god speaking to mike evans to go over there and change that spark plug and begin to build a relationship with them. And he did. But the point of the matter was this man got saved. And then years later, they they made another video and you see Norman sitting next to Mike Evans. And he's like normal guy, you know, glasses, big thick rim glasses like he had back in the day, but he was clean. He was shaven. He was, you know, pretty much uh, a guy that you would you would not know that he had that history but jesus changed him jesus changed him and so we have to move we have to move forward we have to mobilize for christ we can't stay in that bed we can't stay in that place And, and if we are there tonight if we're in a depressed state you, you can be depressed and not even know it. I did not know how depressed I was, honestly, because I could still laugh. I could still function. I was still doing my jobs that I was doing. I was still, you know, normal and functioning with my family. And I still read my Bible and I still prayed, but I was severely depressed. 
And then Christ took that depression and he dealt with it. We're going to close with that tonight. And so maybe tonight you're in that place where you feel like I haven't been really moving very much for the Lord lately. You have, maybe you haven't been really functioning like you should. Maybe you're depressed, discouraged. Maybe you're in a bed of affliction tonight where you feel like you you just need to break free tonight. You need to come out of that. Jesus would say to you tonight, like he said to me and like he has said to a multitude, take up your bed, rise, take up your bed and walk. Rise, take up your bed and walk. And if, if you are in that place tonight where you feel isolated, you feel depressed, discouraged, you know, a lot of these mass shootings, when they you know, been able to talk to these kids, if they like the one kid, I think it was Parkland, that did all that killing there. And he said he was depressed. He said he was hearing voices way before he actually did it. And isolating ourselves is the worst thing we could do. If you're discouraged tonight, if you're lonely, depressed, the best thing you could do is find some people that will love you, that will put their arm around you and say, it's okay. Jesus is with you. He's going to get you through this. And, and that's what that's what the church is supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Jesus said, I didn't call those that are healthy or, or righteous, but those that are sick, those that, that are in need of a doctor. And Jesus reached out to the worst of his day, the ones that were demonized, the ones that were sick and oppressed. But he also reached out to the rich young ruler and he reached out to Nicodemus, who was a wise uh, sage scribe of the Pharisees. He reached all different kinds of people, all different kinds of humanity in his time on this earth. Jesus reached people because he loved them, because he was willing to take on their pain. He was willing to take on their suffering. In the movie, The Chosen, that series, in that movie, they, they had this John chapter 5 story of the man that was healed. And in the movie adaptation of it, and I love it, Jesus told the disciples, he said, I have somebody I need to see. I have somebody I need to meet. Man, that could be you. That could be me. You think about the son of God. Who created heaven and earth. Who created the universe. Who created us from the dust of the earth. That he would care so much. That he would come down from heaven. Become a human being. Put on flesh. Feel our feelings, feel the pain, the sorrow, the suffering. And I told you uh, Friday, he said that he was in the garden of Gethsemane. He was overcome with grief so much that he felt like arrows were pointing at his soul. This is Jesus, son of God. This is what he did. But he says in, in, in the adaptation of in the movie, he said, I have someone I have to see. And they went to the pool of Bethesda, just like in the story. But they had lived a little bit and they had the man and he says, when, when Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? He's, he looks at him and he says, and he started crying. And he says, yes, but I can't get to the water. If I could get to the water, maybe there would be a chance I could be healed. And Jesus said, I didn't ask you if you can get to the water. I ask you, do you want to be healed? And with that, Jesus lifted him up. And as he lifted him up, the man began to walk. 
and he began to run. He began to praise God and he began to shout with ecstatic joy that he was healed. But the thing that I'll never forget was this joy in Jesus' face when he healed the man. Jesus took just as much delight that he was healed in the man that was actually healed. There was this, this ecstatic joy and laughter in Jesus when he healed the man. And in each time that he healed somebody, it's like you could see how joyous he was. I believe that's the way Jesus really was. I do. Because I believe that Jesus, when he sought that man out and said, I have someone I have to see. He saw a man that for 38 years was not able to move. And in one instance, he heals him and now he's moving. He's moving. He's walking. And you, like I said, you can be immobilized by fear. You can be immobilized by somebody bullying you. You can be immobilized by somebody talking bad about you. I mean, there's tons of reasons that people can become reclusive and become an isolationist. Most of the people that commit mass shootings are isolationists. They, they isolate themselves from everybody else. This is why we need community. This is why we need fellowship. You're less likely to harm yourself or anybody else if you're in a group where you can talk and people are willing to listen. We said that last night. So I want you to always feel like you can come here and talk. If you got a problem, you can direct message me or anybody on our staff here that has a heart. For, they have a heart for God. They want to serve God and they're willing to help anyone. But it takes that first step. That man had to get up and walk. He had to get up out of that bed and walk. It's hard to get out of a bed that you've stayed in for so long. Emotionally and mentally, that's been your home. That's been the place where you've lived, even though it's a bad place. It's hard to break that. But that's what we have to do. to make a decision are we going to follow Jesus or are we going to let the devil try to hold us down I want to follow Jesus tonight and you know what it doesn't matter I've lived a long time, you know, on this earth, and I've had my share of sorrow. I have had my share of ups and downs. It hasn't always been easy, believe me. But you might be young and thinking, well, you know, I haven't experienced a lot of that yet. But, you know, you don't have to experience bad even in your life to follow Jesus. You just have to be willing to understand that he's the Savior, that he's the Lord. That he died for you on the cross so that you could have eternity with him. And you know what? When I made that decision some 35 years ago, it changed my life. It changed everything about my life. And I've had things happen, you know. I mean, things that break your heart. But man, when you've got the Lord, when you've got the Lord, you can, you can, you got somebody to hold you up, to help you. When you go through those hard times, I don't know how many times this last week I turned to the Lord. And I just said, God, I need your help. You know, you lose something that's dear to you. It's whether it's a pet, an animal or a person. It hurts. It's painful. You know, and and, and you have to have 
the understanding that you can go to God. And in a minute, in a millisecond, he can come into your heart and touch your life and give you a peace. I don't understand it. The Bible says it's the peace of God that passes our understanding. It passes. It bypasses our hurt, our pain. It bypasses our brain. And it goes into our heart. And God somehow has a way of soothing our heart. He's the balm, the Bible says, the balm of Gilead. And that means that he's able to help us. Have you experienced loss in your life yet? Have you lost somebody buddy dear to you? Have you have you felt pain in your life? Where do you go? Where do you go? Some people go to a bottle. They open a pill bottle and they pop a bunch of pills. Some people drink alcohol or they smoke marijuana or they do drugs or whatever to try to ease the pain, as it were. Or they just whatever whatever their sin is. But let me tell you tonight, that only that only masks the pain. Jesus takes the pain away. And he has the scars to prove it. He has the scars to prove it. He took our pain on the cross. Amen. So we're gonna sing this. And if you want to follow Jesus tonight, if you want to give him your life. If you're going through something tonight that you need prayer for and you want us to believe God to help you, let us know what it is tonight. We'll pray before we leave. I have decided follow Jesus. I have decided follow No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Lord, tonight I pray for anyone here that's struggling with depression, discouragement, with the feelings of loss or loneliness. Lord, we know it's hard to admit that. But I pray right now that the Holy Spirit would shine the light of the love of God in every heart here and every person that needs Jesus, that they would turn to the Lord right now, that they would accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, repent of their sins and turn from their bed of sin and start walking with Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Just surrender to the Lord. Say, Jesus, I can't do it without your help. I need your help. Lord, power in my Lord of heaven.
thing is, it's, you know, it's, it's so real. The reality that, you know, you can be uh, suffering in silence and not telling anyone. We encourage that if you have something that you really need help with, maybe you're struggling, I don't know, turn to the Lord. He cares about you. He loves you. And that's the truth. You know, there's so much negative in this world. There's so much craziness in this world. I think we know we don't have to be, you know, geniuses to figure out that Satan is attacking this world and attacking especially young people today. And this is one of the reasons why I came on Discord is to be, to show you guys that, you know, God isn't just some weird, strange idea out there. I mean, Jesus came into this world and he loved people to death. Yes, he did. He died on the cross. He lived his life three and a half years and then he he accepted to be crucified on the cross for us so we could have eternal life so we could know him but but then he related to people on so many different levels that is unbelievable so if again and we're close with this if you've got a prayer request or something you want us to pray about um definitely let us know you know if you want a private message me if you've got something you don't want to share in a public group i'll pray with you i want to make sure that you know you know we're living in a time when you know it's it's real this problems out there and we see this you know this last school shooting was so horrific i think it's waking people up even more than ever before that uh, we need to pray for our, our youth and our schools and everything else. Lord, we just lift up again our schools as, as they get ready to close for the summer and open up again in the fall. We pray, Lord, your protection on teachers, on the students. We ask God that you will be with these schools, that they will know how to uh, lock down and do what they need to do so that their schools aren't open to the enemy, open season for the devil. We come against those that would have these thoughts in their head and, and these lying spirits and demons that have taunted them to go out and kill and murder. We pray for life, Lord, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus to flow. And we pray for the spirit of God to move in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank everybody for listening and joining our, our server tonight. If you, this is your first time, we uh, welcome you to come back. We have uh, Thursday night, we have a live service that we do. It's kind of a, more of media sharing and different things. That's at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Friday night, we have a service that we do prayer-wise and such. And then Sunday, we have our church. And it's at 9 we welcome you to come and be a part of it. And then we have chat during the day, uh, and we're trying to get our chat going, and it's coming along. And so, you know, all these things we're doing to try to bring people into the knowledge of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we're keeping it simple. Just, you know, if there's more stuff that we have. And if, if you're interested in learning more about all that we're doing, um, just let us know. Uh, come on in and ask. We also have uh, drug messaging and then we have a ticket system now. If anybody wants to, uh, if you've got a question about anything or you can message me, of course, or Game Warrior as well, who's uh, also helping with the server and other people too. But um, if you have something that's ministry related, 
or you want prayer for something, we have a prayer request room as well. We have several people that are helping us. I could list all the names, but then I'd forget somebody and <laughs> I don't I don't want to offend anyone. But yeah, it's all good. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't mean to be I don't mean to be dismissive of anything else. Um, there is something going on on Twitch, but I'm not really sure all about that yet. So, I'll... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we do have a Twitch channel, but sadly, the name isn't Jesus Connect as I couldn't get that accuser. So right now, it's it's uh, Jesus Together. Okay. Well, right now we just uh, want to. Right now we're just concerning ourselves with this server, okay? Yeah. Because uh, we don't yeah, want to yeah, confuse people. Saying. We don't want to confuse people that but are just new. Just stay in the server. Everything will be based in the server. Just stay in the server. We be a lot of events are upcoming with the team. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, we thank you for coming, and God bless you. We'll see everybody uh, Thursday. Unless you're on our team, and then we'll be to get in together on Tuesday night. And, and if there's any other meetings there or whatever, we'll let you know. But I think that's it. All right. God bless everybody. And we'll talk to you all later. Have a good week. Burn, how you burn.